Paul, a regular gentleman experiencing chest pain, makes the decision to pay his doctor a visit. This moment is all too familiar to many of us who face similar health concerns. His decision, seemingly simple, is one that's packed with a myriad of mixed emotions. As he approaches the medical office his heart pounds, a cocktail of anxiety and anticipation to say the least. The least. Walking through the doors of the facility he finds himself greeted by the familiar scent of antiseptics mixed with a comforting sense of professional assurance. This is the day he has been waiting for, a day that promises to shed some light on the unexplained discomfort that has been him for weeks. His doctor, a pillar of knowledge and expertise, welcomes him with a warm smile that radiates with understanding and empathy. This doctor, a seasoned professional with years of experience under his belt, is prepared to unravel the enigma that has been causing Paul's discomfort. His calm demeanor and meticulous approach provide a reassuring presence for Paul. The office transforms from a mere room into a stage. It's here, amidst the crisp white adorned with medical certificates, that the narrative of Paul's health will be told and understood. Now the stage is set for the consultation to begin. The doctor takes a deep breath, clears his throat, and prepares to delve into the world of medical diagnosis. Each word uttered will be a step closer to understanding the root cause of Paul's affliction. Now we step into this scene as Paul's doctor begins to unfold the various potential causes of chest pain and their impact on the human body. Ever thought about why your chest might hurt Paul? Chest pain is when you feel uncomfortable or unwell between your neck and tummy. It's something a lot of people feel, and it can be caused by many things. Some causes are small, others are much bigger. Why is it important? Well, chest pain is usually the first warning sign of really serious health problems, so it's something we should never ignore. Chest pain can come from lots of different things, all linked to different parts of body. It could be something to do with your heart, like a heart attack or angina. It could be because of a problem in lungs, like pneumonia or a blockage in the blood vessels of your lungs. It could even come from problems with your digestion, like acid reflux or GERD, but that's just scratching the surface. Stick with me, Paul, as we dig deeper into the different reasons why your chest might hurt and what they do to your body. All right, Paul, let's talk about what might cause your chest pain, starting with one you might have heard of, heart problems. When you feel a tightness in your chest, it's natural to think about your heart, and you're not wrong, Paul. There are several conditions related to your ticker that can cause this discomfort. Let's break down a few of them. One of the well-known culprits of chest pain is something called a myocardial infarction but you might know it better as a heart attack. Think of it like a traffic jam in your heart circulation, often caused by a clot or blockage. When this happens, part of your heart muscle can get damaged. That's where the chest pain comes from. Then there's angina, a type of chest discomfort that's like a red light warning on your dashboard. This happens when your heart isn't getting enough blood, usually during a workout or stressful situation. Once you relax or take your medicine, it usually gets better. Now imagine your heart muscle gets a flu. We call this myocarditis. Often brought on by a virus it can cause chest pain and even lead to heart failure. Next let's talk about pericarditis and something called Dressler's Syndrome. Picture your heart wrapped in a fluffy blanket, that's your pericardium. When this blanket gets inflamed we call it pericarditis. Dressler's Syndrome is a similar condition but it pops up after a heart attack or heart surgery. Both can cause a sharp chest pain that might feel worse when you lie down or take a deep breath. Lastly, there's something known as cardiac tamponade. Imagine a water balloon filling up around your heart. That's what happens here when blood or fluids fill the space around your heart muscle, making it hard for your heart to pump properly. This too can cause chest pain. These are just a few heart-related issues that can cause the discomfort you've been feeling, Paul. I know it sounds scary, but understanding what's happening is the first step towards getting better. Now that we've chatted about the heart's role in chest pain, let's focus on another part of your body that could be involved, your lungs. Have you ever thought that your lungs could be a reason for chest pain, Paul? Let's simplify this and look at a few conditions of the lungs that could be causing this discomfort. Imagine pneumonia like a small fire in your lungs' air sacs, causing them to hurt. This often results in chest pain. Then picture a little road blocker as in pulmonary embolism, where a blood clot gets stuck in a lung's artery, causing severe chest pain. Next, try to visualize pneumothorax or hemothorax, where air or blood sneaks into the space between your lung and chest wall, leading to sharp chest pain. If this gets worse and the pressure builds up, it can be as dangerous as a ticking bomb or what we tension pneumothorax. Now, MPMA is like a pool of unwanted guests or pus, 
collecting in the lung's outer space leading to chest pain and fever. Pulmonary neoplasms or lung tumors and bronchiectasis, a condition where the lung's important tubes are permanently damaged and stretched out, can also cause chest pain. Lastly, there's tuberculosis, an infectious disease that targets the lungs, often causing a sharp, constant pain. We've traveled through the heart and lungs, now let's journey next into your digestive system to see how it can cause chest pain, Paul. Let's dive into how problems in your tummy can cause chest discomfort, Paul. So first up is this thing called esophageal spasm. Imagine it like a sudden and painful cramp in the tube that carries your food from your mouth to your stomach. Then there's this thing called gastroesophageal reflux disease or GERD. It's like when you've had a bit too much spicy food and your stomach acid comes rushing back up. Both of these can make your chest hurt. Another thing is called a peptic ulcer disease or PUD. It's like getting painful blisters in your stomach or the top part of your small guts and it feels like a burning in your chest. Gastritis, which is when your stomach lining gets angry, can also make your chest hurt. It's like your stomach's protective shield is low on battery, causing discomfort that feels like chest pain. Pancreatitis, when your pancreas gets upset, can cause bad chest pain, just like biliary colic, a type of gallstone pain. In pancreatitis, it's like the pancreas is eating itself, while the pain from biliary colic comes from a gallstone stuck in your gallbladder. We've talked about the heart, lungs, and stomach. But there are a couple more things that can cause chest pain we need to chat about. Let's talk about some less common but still important reasons you might feel pain in your chest, Paul. Think of the space between the lungs as a room, and in this room, things like lymphoma and thymoma exist. Lymphoma is like a bad weed in your garden, it's a cancer of your lymphatic system. Thymoma on the other hand, is like an uninvited guest. It's a tumor in the thymus gland, can make your chest feel uncomfortable. Next, we have what we call vascular causes. Imagine a tire that's about to burst, that's what a dissecting aortic aneurysm is like. The inner layer of the aorta tears, and causes severe sudden chest pain. A total rupture of the aorta, on the other hand, is just like that burst tire. It's often fatal causes severe chest pain and shock. Now imagine the surface of your chest as a wall. Conditions like costochondritis, which is an inflammation of the brick and mortar connecting the ribs to the breastbone, can cause pain similar to a heart attack. A rib fracture, well, it's like a cracked brick. Skin conditions such as a bruise or a shingles outbreak can also make your chest hurt. And we mustn't ignore conditions related to the chest that can cause discomfort. Lastly, we must think about the role of your mental and emotional state. Your mind is very powerful, Paul, and feelings of stress or anxiety can show up as physical symptoms, including chest pain. Even though this type of chest pain isn't tied to a physical disease, it's still real and can be quite worrisome. As we've seen, chest pain can come from many places. Knowing these can help doctors like me diagnose and treat conditions more effectively. So, the next time you feel a twinge in your chest, remember, quite an adventure we've been on today, hasn't it Paul? We've delved into the maze of reasons behind the common sensation of chest discomfort. We've peeled back its potential sources, from the heart to the lungs, the stomach and beyond. It's a complex topic, but understanding it is key to figuring out what your body might be saying. We started our journey with heart-related causes. We chatted about conditions like heart attacks or angina, inflammation of the heart muscle or the sac around it, conditions arising after a heart attack or heart surgery, and even a condition where fluid fills up the space around your heart. These are all serious, potentially very dangerous and you need to seek medical help right away, Paul. Then we moved on to lung-related causes which can include diseases like pneumonia, blockages in blood vessels in the lungs, collapsed lungs, and even abnormal cell growth. Then we went on to stomach-related problems, touching on conditions like spasms in the food pipe, acid reflux, inflammation inflammation or damage to the tissues of the food pipe, stomach or gallbladder among others. We also chatted about other causes that are located in the area around the heart and lungs, like lymph node and thymus gland cancers and problems with the major blood vessels. Surface structures like inflammation of the ribs, fractured ribs, skin bruising or shingles, and breast-related problems can also cause chest discomfort. Lastly, we discussed the psychological aspect. Sometimes the stress or worry we feel can show up as physical symptoms, including chest discomfort. So all in all, chest discomfort can be a sign of a wide range of conditions, each with its own specific reasons, complications, and treatments. It's a tricky symptom that needs a professional to properly figure out and manage. Remember Paul, chest discomfort is not something to be taken lightly or ignored. 
It's a sign that something could be wrong and it's always better to be safe than sorry. If you're feeling chest discomfort, go see a doctor. It's a sign from your body that something could be wrong and it's our job to listen to these signs and act. And finally, remember Paul, when it comes to chest discomfort, it's always better to be safe than sorry. Always seek medical help if you're worried. Let's put our focus on the importance of professional consultation. The information we've presented today is designed to help you understand chest discomfort in greater depth. Yet it doesn't stand as a substitute for professional medical advice. We all have unique bodies thus each of us needs personalized medical advice. In situations where you're experiencing chest discomfort, it's crucial to seek advice from a healthcare provider. They hold the expertise to provide an accurate diagnosis and develop a treatment plan tailoring to your unique medical history and current health status. Keep safe, stay informed, and always bear in mind that it's far better to be safe than sorry. Remember, everyone's body is unique, each person may experience chest discomfort differently, and the cause of it can vary greatly. Just like Paul, you might be feeling a certain way but it could be due to a completely different reason. Your health journey is as unique as you are. It's important to stress here that while this video provides general information about the various causes of chest discomfort, it's not a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. If you're experiencing chest discomfort, consult with a healthcare provider for your specific situation. They can provide you with the right diagnosis and treatment plan based on your medical history and current health condition. Also, remember to be proactive about your health. Regular checkups and health screenings can help detect potential health issues early, making them easier to treat. So don't wait for discomfort to strike before you take action. Prevention is always better than cure. Stay safe and take care of your health, folks. Remember, your health is your wealth, and you are the best advocate for it. So listen to your body, seek professional help when needed, and stay informed about your health. Let's continue to navigate this complex world of health and wellness together. Until next time.